Peggy 18. The mission with the cut scenes is to make every single scene interesting enough in itself as something that the player would want to see. You can watch them, you get like an introduction to the level, you understand the characters a little bit more and then you go on with the game. In a game like Hitman where there is so much gameplay, there is so much within the game mechanics to challenge the players, the cut scenes also becomes a break between those kind of challenging gameplay moments. Damn it. <laughs> Mr. Dexter is not someone that you want to mess with. I think cutscenes are getting better and better. They're actually much, much better at using the language of cinematography and of story, like movie storytelling and making compelling stories and characters. And this is just a natural evolution in games to, to lean on what we've learned from cinema. We're actually treating it like a classical movie. We're trying always to have like these, you know, really slow dolly moves and shooting from outside the doorway into the room and trying to have this like subtle treatment of it and it actually works really well. We have like an awesome team of animators and environment artists and lighting and comping and the composers and sound designers. I mean a lot of people are working really hard on making them. All right, what is it worth to you? Name your price. If they um, convey a sense of motivation to play the game um, and we've taken a lot of care to add that to Hitman Absolution, um, it's, it's all well and good to be given a task to go and you have to take out a certain target, but if you can apply an emotional reason or, or a really solid motivation to do that, it just makes it more enjoyable and a lot more fun to play. <laughs> now listen to the city. <laughs> if anyone mentions a girl, you know what to do. I'll call you. We started out wanting to do motion capture and then do voice acting separately and kind of combine yeah, it. This is a classical way, at least for us, to, to produce cutscenes. But we were allowed to hire real professional Hollywood actors and do the performance capture, which is basically doing motion capture, facial capture and voice at the same time. Mr. Travis, you know this is my prayer time. This definitely reminded me of making literally a motion picture. And, and that it's like very beautiful, very clear. And, and I think that it's a wonderful aspect that, they, that they've added to the video game. The basics of motion capture is that we have a series of cameras placed around a room and they record optically these little markers that are placed on, on actors. And uh, it triangulates the data in the space and records movement. And we cover the actors with all of these and we can tell where their arms and legs and torsos are in space and that gets applied to the skeletons of the characters. Where performance capture comes in is similar, but on a far more subtle level. We had a helmet-mounted camera and used that as reference for keyframing. If you have to marker up the face, there's a lot of micro-movements that get captured, um, and that goes through a similar process, but it usually requires far more cameras to pick up the smaller dots and, and the smaller ranges of movement. Also with ours, it required a soundproof studio, which Giant had where we shot, so we could have the actors' voices synced up with their movement and just get a more believable performance out of them. That was really important to us. Well, I always describe motion capture to people as the most natural performance an actor will ever have in the most unnatural environment, because you're never having to cheat to camera. You're never having to cheat to a light. You're never having to worry about a camera over the shoulder. They don't have to worry about hair, makeup, lighting, wardrobe, nothing. All they're having to worry about is true performance. We found him. Okay, people, listen up. I'm giving a green light on this operation. I want 47's head on a platter in front of me ASAP. The only way I can describe it is, yeah, you got the 360 because the cameras are everywhere but you also have this monkey suit on and this silly hat with a camera sitting in front of your face. And so to, to the focus level that it takes is uh, unique within itself, playing a lot of uh, technology that you're pretending is not there. So it's a whole other thing. 
that takes some adjusting to get to. For example, just a simple thing, like, see this thing right in front of your face? It's very hard to focus on the other actor if that's there, and like, this character smokes. So just technically, you can't bring a cigarette up because you smack into that camera, so you have to find a way that looks cool and goes in there and does it. So it was challenging. The actors did have a lot of good suggestions, and they would say, this feels like out of character, and we'd be like, that's true, and we had a lot of back and forth. So we spent quite a bit of time on working with their voices, on getting, like, getting a little deeper into the characters, like giving them some layers to the performances. The physicality and the origin of it is very much on the actor's shoulders, but from that point on, the animator's involvement in it shouldn't be really sold short. They add a huge amount of emotion and of physicality and everything to the scene. Wade. Mm, I heard you. You want me to snatch some chick? The man's gonna call you, tell you how to find her. And there's a convergence where the, the line between cutscene and gameplay is blurring, and it's a, it's a major goal for a lot of AAA games is to, to have it as one fluid experience and not take the user out of the gameplay and really immerse them in the story and the characters and the universe that we've created.